Hi everybody, welcome to Eastside Kids Online. It's me, Pastor Peter, and once again, I don't have a special helper, so I'm going to need your help today. So, we're going to get right to it this morning. Are you ready? Stand up on your feet, gather everybody around with you, and let's start with our call song. special rules each week. Let's get right to it. Our rules today are be kind. Be kind to everybody. And this week as we're celebrating Father's Day, be kind to your dad. Be kind to that special man in your life. Let's be kind. And a new rule for today, don't eat your earwax. Very simple rule. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Can I stick your finger in your ear? You just kind of got an itch that you just got to kind of scratch and then oh disgusting Blah! don't eat your earwax very simple rule i'm sure we'll all be able to follow it today well boys and girls once again you're my special helper for today and we are going to sing one song that we already have learned then we're going to sing a new song, and then we're going to sing another song that we already know. So, are you ready? Let's start with This Is Living. We're going to move around. We're going to be jumping. We're going to be dancing. Are you ready? Here we go. i 
great job. Get ready. Here is our brand new song.
Jesus, we just thank you so much that we can sing these songs, that we can dance, that we can do these actions, and all of it is worship for you, that we know you are so great, so amazing, so incredible, and we just want to praise you. We say this in your name. Amen. Amen. Great job, everybody. What would you think of our new song? I kind of liked it. It was kind of cool. Well, uh, you guys can take a seat for a moment because this is the part of our service each week where we remind you about offering. And since you're already my special helper, I'm sure you're well aware that we're setting aside a little bit of the money that we get, maybe from a birthday, maybe from an aunt coming to visit, maybe from something else. Maybe you got to do some chores and you got some allowance. But we're setting aside our offerings so that when we can come back together again, we can bring and give our offering. And I'm excited about that because all of our kids' offerings go to help kids in Haiti and so that they can have clothes to wear, shoes on their feet, good school that they can go to, nice food that they get to eat, all those wonderful things. And so that's what your money goes to. It's going to God and it's helping kids in Haiti. Well, boys and girls, I know there's some kids out there who've had a birthday this last week, or maybe your birthday is coming up soon in this next week. And each week we want to take a moment to say, Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you if it's your birthday. Happy birthday to those of you who've had a birthday recently. We are so excited about what God is doing in your life. That God made you. God formed you. God has a great plan for you. And so we celebrate you and we celebrate your birthday. Well, boys and girls, we have come to our big word, our memory verse video. And today we are celebrating Father's Day. And it's part of our special days that we celebrate. We already celebrated uh, Mother's Day earlier this year. We also had a special day where we talked about communion. And today for Father's Day, we have a video that ties to those other videos. So maybe you haven't seen it for a while. Maybe uh, it's not familiar to you, but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do these actions. And I know my special helpers at home, you guys are professional dancers. You guys know these moves. You don't even have to see them beforehand. You just know how to pop it and lock it and move it. And uh, we're gonna do a great job. Are you ready? Stand up on your feet with me and let's Try this one, okay? It's kind of familiar, you remember? Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Okay, we're good. Give thanks no matter what happens. Oh yeah. Okay. Always be joyful. Yeah, yeah. Never stop praying. Okay, we got it. Give thanks no matter what happens. Oh yeah. dance moves and now let's look at our memory verse this is a verse we've been learning on our special days and it says always be joyful never stop praying give thanks no matter what happens oh yeah God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus first Thessalonians 5 16 to 18 Wow, 
What a great verse about always being joyful. No matter what happens, we can praise God. Well, that ties into today where we're celebrating Father's Day. We're celebrating this one day out of the year where we say thank you to our dads. We honor our dads. We celebrate who they are. And so we're going to learn more about this and how we can honor and celebrate dads and other special men that God has brought into our lives. And so we're going to start today by looking at some of the dads in the Bible, because there's lots of different dads that we can look at. There's some really great dads. There's also some dads who weren't very good dads. But we're going to focus on some incredible dads from the Bible today, and we're going to look at them. So here we go, dads in the Bible. And I'm going to read to you from our very special Bible story that's going to talk about some different dads. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Here's our first picture. Abraham, father of many nations, says, I am the Lord God Almighty. Walk with me faithfully and be blameless. I will make my covenant between you and me and increase your numbers. These are the words God said to a man named Abram when he was 99 years old. Abram and his wife, Sarai, had not been able to have children. And now that they were old in years, it was impossible for them to have any. Overwhelmed by the words of the Lord, Abram fell to the ground. This is my everlasting covenant with you and your descendants, said the Lord God. You, Abram, will be a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful and kings will come from your line. I am going to change your name to Abraham and your wife, Sarai. She's going to be known as Sarah. For she is going to become the mother of nations. Abraham remained faithful to God. And when he was a hundred years old and Sarah 90, they gave birth to a son just as God had promised. They named him Isaac. And he was the beginning of Abraham becoming the father of nations. Abraham is looked upon as one of the fathers of the Christian faith and is mentioned in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. There it says that from this one God-fearing man came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. In the Gospels of the New Testament, Jesus shows us what God, our Heavenly Father, is like. One of Jesus' most well-known parables is called the Parable of the Lost Son. It's a story about a, a father and his two sons. Take a look here. Here we've got the prodigal son. One day, his youngest son asked for his inheritance money. The son left home with the money and decided to waste all on parties and wild living. But at some point, the money had to run out. And when it did, the son couldn't afford to buy any food. So he got a job feeding pigs. It was there that he came to his senses and decided to return to his father and brother. When his father saw his son on the horizon, he ran to meet him and hugged him. The son said, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. But the father welcomed him home and celebrated his return by saying, my son was lost and now he is found. And then this part, we praise God for dads. Jesus told this story to show that God, the Heavenly Father, welcomes everyone into his family, no matter what they've done. We praise God for dads, that, or we praise God for dads, and that we are all a part of God's big family. 
So two dads there, Abram, who became Abraham, who was the father of nations and the father of the lost son, the prodigal son who wasted all of his dad's money and then eventually came back home. But the dad welcomed him back into his family, loved his son. And we know that God is our father. Wow. So today on Father's Day, as we celebrate dads, let's look at what we're learning. That we thank God for dads and amazing men in our lives. Wow. We can thank God for our dads. Everybody has a dad. Every single person has a dad. Even if you don't get to see your dad, even if your dad has passed away, you still have a dad. And each one of us, we can thank God for our dad. We can thank God for all of the dads. And even if you have a dad, or maybe if you're not able to see or be around your dad, there are other great men in our lives that God has brought into our lives, and we can thank God for them. So we're thanking God for dads and amazing men in our lives. Hmm, can you think about some amazing men in your life? Maybe you've got an uncle. Maybe it's an older cousin or an older brother or a family friend, somebody who's amazing. It could be a coach on one of your teams. It could be your dad. We want to honor them and thank them and celebrate them today on Father's Day. So, we praise God for dads. We celebrate dads. Being a dad can be a tough job, but we love our dads. We celebrate our dads and we praise God for dads. The dads are there looking out for us protecting and providing and we can think of all the reasons why we want to celebrate dads dads who play catch with us dads who are in our lives dads who we get to see all the time and even dads where we may not get to see them all the time dads who aren't in our lives but the other men and special people that god has brought into our lives the ones who provide, the ones who play catch with us, the ones who are there to watch us when we're doing our sports or our ballet or all the other things that we do in our life. We honor God by praising him for dads, for thanking him for the dads and good people he's brought into our lives. Well, when we're talking about honoring our parents, honoring our dads, what does honor mean? Honor is high respect. It is great esteem. We give that person an important place in our life. And so we can think about the people, the men, who have an important place in our life. If that's them, those are the ones that we honor. And so we can thank God for giving us special guys in our life, guys who look out for us, guys who teach us to do guy things, guys who are always there watching out for us, protecting, providing. We thank God for dads. We thank God for special guys he brings into our life. So that's what honor is about. It's high respect, great esteem, and that we give that person an important place in our life. Well, something about dads is dads love dad jokes. I don't know if you've noticed this. I don't know if your dad or the special guy in your life has ever been telling you some dad jokes. Dad jokes are hilarious. They're the best. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a dad. We all love dad jokes, right? Right, boys and girls? Right? You love dad jokes. No? Maybe not? Okay, well, I have some dad jokes that I want to share with you. And I think they're hilarious. Uh, but you guys can be the judge at home, and you can let me know if you think these are funny or not. Are you ready? We've got some great dad jokes here. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Ready? Here's my first dad joke. How many apples grow on a tree? Hmm, you're looking at a tree? How many apples grow on a tree? All of them, all apple 
apples grow on a tree. Oh, that was a good one. I know you're laughing at home because it's hilarious. Okay, okay. Maybe that wasn't my best dad joke, but I think I've got another one here you're going to love, okay? Maybe you didn't like that first one. Maybe you're not laughing yet, but I think you're going to laugh at this one. Are you ready? Okay. Why could the bike stand up by itself? You ready? It was too tired. Get it? Too tired, like it was too tired, but also like it has two tires because it's a bike and it couldn't stand up because it just had two tires and it was falling over. It's hilarious. It's such a good dad joke. I, I feel like you guys aren't laughing. I feel like you're not appreciating these dad jokes. Maybe is your dad laughing? Is the special guy in your life who's maybe watching this, are they laughing? Because these are hilarious, boys and girls. Okay, okay, I got another one for you. I got another one for you. How about this one? Where do you learn to make ice cream? Where do you learn to make ice cream? Well, obviously you learn to make ice cream at Sunday school. Get it? Like an ice cream Sunday. And Sunday school is a school that we go to on Sundays, like right now, Sunday school. I feel like there should be more laughter out there, boys and girls. I don't feel like you're laughing enough. Okay, last one. This is, I saved the best for last. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Here we go. What do you call somebody with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. Ah, ah, dad jokes. Okay, so maybe not all dad jokes are always funny, and maybe you're not laughing as much, but I'm a dad and I think they're hilarious. And so maybe by the time some of you are dads, uh, or maybe when you're grown up, maybe when you're moms, maybe when you're adults, you'll think these are funny too. Well, dads love dad jokes, so uh, you can take some of those, repeat them to your dad, repeat them to a special guy in your life, because they'll probably really appreciate those great dad jokes I'm giving you. Well, we're talking about dads, and in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, it talks about how children are to be towards their parents. It says, children, you belong to the Lord. And you do the right thing when you obey your parents. The first commandment with a promise says, Obey your father and your mother, and you will have a long and happy life. Wow, that's a commandment. It's something we're supposed to do. It's something we have to do. And yet, it comes with a promise that if we do this, we will have a long and happy life. And so if you want to have a long and happy life, well, obey your parents. Obey your father and your mother. God has put them in your life to help you, to take care of you, to teach you the way to go. And when we obey our parents, we are honoring God because he gave us our parents. He's the one who tells us that we're to obey our parents. It's the right thing to do. And it has a promise. A long and happy life will be yours if you choose to obey. And so today, I know there's all sorts of things we could do to celebrate dads. You could give your dad some chocolate. You could give them something to drink. You could give them something to munch on. You could give them a nice tie that you decorated out of craft paper. You could do all those things. But one of the best things we can do to show we honor God and honor our parents is to obey them. All right, well, let's see what's next. Because remember, we're talking about we thank God for dads and for amazing men in our lives. It's not just your one dad, but it's all of the special guys you have in your life. Your grandpa, your uncle, your coaches, those special people, friends of your family who are helping you, who are in your life. We want to honor them and thank God for them. Well, God is also our 
heavenly father. God is your dad. So you have a human dad, but you also have God who is your father. God who created you. God who knit you and put you together. God who has a special plan for your life. God who created the universe. He is your dad. He's your father. Look at this. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. It says, some people did accept him, this is Jesus, and did believe in his name. He gave them the right to become children of God. To be a child of God has nothing to do with human parents. Children of God are not born because of human choice or because a husband wants them to be born. They are born because of what God does. And so you and me, we are children of God. When we choose to believe in Jesus, to accept Jesus, know that he is our Lord, he is our Savior, that he died on a cross so that we can be uh, his own, that he's bought us with a price. And now we are part of God's family. We are children of God. God is your father. God loves you. God made you. And so maybe you don't get to see your dad. Maybe there aren't a lot of special guys in your life. Well, you've got the most special guy of all. You've got God. God is your father. God who created everything, who made you, is your daddy. And I think that is amazing. Look at this one. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. As bad as you are, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. So this is Jesus, and he's talking, and he's talking to some dads. And he's saying, look, all of us, you guys, you're not that great. Okay, you think you're something special. You're not that great. All of you, you still know how to give good gifts to your kids. You know how to celebrate their birthdays. You know at Christmas time to get them something special. You know how to protect your kids. You know how to provide for your kids. You're looking out for them. But your heavenly father is even more ready to give good things to people who ask. That's our father in heaven. He is more ready even than your dad, even than some special guy in your life to give you good things. To people who ask. So today, you can ask. Ask God. Ask your dad. Ask your dad in heaven for some good things. And know that he is giving you some great things in your heart, in your life, even today. Psalm 68 verse 5 says that God is a father to the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. He's a father to the fatherless. That's who God is. So maybe you don't have a dad. Maybe you don't get to see your dad. Maybe your dad's not around. God is a father to the fatherless. He is your dad. He loves you. He cares about you. And maybe you have a great dad. Maybe you've got an amazing dad who's sitting right next to you. That's so exciting. That's something to be celebrated. That's something to love. You also have an even more incredible dad who's God, your heavenly father. All right, so today we talked about some dads in the Bible. We talked about Abraham, Father Abraham. He had a son, and he became the father of nations. We celebrate and look at these cool dads from the Bible. There's also the dad that Jesus tells a story about, where there's the lost son, the prodigal son, the wasteful son, who takes all of the money that he gets from his dad. He asks for it early. He wastes it all on crazy living and crazy parties. And when he has nothing left, he decides to go back home. And as soon as his dad sees him looking out the window, he's watching and there's his son walking towards home. The dad runs. He 
picks up his robe, he runs, he books it as fast as he can, and he grabs his son in a great big hug to show how much he loves his son, welcomes his son back as his son into his family, because that is how God loves us. God loves us. He wants us to be in his family. He's got great things for us. And so for us, we want to say, thank you, God. Thanks for being my dad. Thank you, God, for the good dad that you brought into my life. The dads I have in my life. My grandpa, my uncles, the other special men in my life, the coaches, all these people that I can say, thank you, God, for giving me these great people in my life who I can look up to, who I can follow, and most of all, thank you for being my dad. Wow, as we're celebrating Father's Day, there's so much for us to be excited about and thankful for. Jesus, in his great prayer, the Lord's Prayer, when he taught his disciples how to pray, he started by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It's so cool that Jesus started his prayer, not just by saying, My dad in heaven, but by saying, Our Father in heaven all of us. He's our father. He's my dad. He's your dad. Our father in heaven. We praise your name. And so all of us today, as we celebrate Father's Day, we can say, thank you, Father God. Thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. You're my dad. So today we thank God for dads. Thank God for your dad. Thank God for the amazing men in your life. So today is a great day to stop and appreciate those men in your life and to thank God for them and to say thank you to them, to show them that we honor them. And so here's what I wanna encourage you to do today. I want you to take time to honor, remember that word honor, as we're talking about having high esteem and great respect and identifying those important people, the people who have an important place in your life, I want you to take some time to honor your dad or a man in your life, or maybe it's a, a bunch of guys in your life. Today is a day where we celebrate dads. We celebrate those great guys in your life. And today, let's take a moment to thank God for being our father, that we are his children, that all of us that believe in Jesus, we're all part of one great, big, enormous family. So today, as you're making your crafts, as you're celebrating your dad, as you're celebrating these guys, take time to honor your dad or a man in your life. Well, boys and girls, I'd love to hear about how you are honoring your dad today. And you can get your parents to email me at peter at eastsidecitychurch.ca. So you want to show me your cool dance moves as you're dancing and singing along to our songs? You want to show me a picture that you drew or some way that you're honoring your dad? I'd love to see it. I'd love to hear from you. And so ask your mom or dad to send me an email right here. Well, boys and girls, you have been terrific terrific, incredible, amazing special helpers. In fact, I don't think any of you ate any of your earwax today. And so you followed our rule spectacularly and I applaud you for that. And now we've come to the end of our time. And so we say goodbye, so long. I miss you, I love you, bye.